Received your first kiss It feels as if I've never danced before As if I've never even sung You see that many memories we cherish actually, if you could see them again, it's like they're nothing at all. You know? Yeah. This is what I would say well, about things like this generally. It's not just you, this movie, anybody's movie. And we all have our movie, not it's not not just uh, this movie, but our own movie, full of many things that we think you know. This this is what makes my life, uh, my life real. You're thinking, this is what makes my life real. This is part of who I am. But if you could actually see it and actually look at it again, it, it's dead. It's gone for you. Much of the memories and what things are, you know, they were just right for that moment. But something preserved them and said, "This is important to keep, and they are not to be kept." And what happens is that uh, the consciousness itself, in the state of the presence, you know, it doesn't keep anything at all because consciousness does not have to store any memory. The memory normally that we have is in service to the person to keep the person alive. If you could actually see them again, you'll see that they're you're finished with them. This is what I think is good about this, you know, like things like this, no? That uh, many things we have, you know, that something is so precious, but it's in your mind, but your life has moved on from this. And when you go to look at it again, you see that it never was the thing you saw. Mm -hmm. It was just you were at that stage, you thought that was something. And, and everything is like that. Everything is like this. <laughs> you see, so if uh, if you can look and you you you, we are cherishing ideas about life, which were not even real, even in that time. They were just whatever they are. I mean, you know, you you see a movie and say that movie is so good. No, the movie is just whatever it is. You experience it and register it and say that is really really good. But when you see it again, maybe somebody else look at it now and say, "Wow, this is really good." But you, from your from your moment of seeing and memory till now, you see. But actually, I don't see anything so great about it. You know, even relationships are like this. You've moved on because life has moved you on. But then, after a certain time, you feel a bit lonely. You think, "Oh man, why did I give this person up?" And it was so. You know, they were so good like this, they were so this. But then if you were put back in that situation again now with your now you, you say, Oh my god, I couldn't live with this. How I live with that for so long. <laughs> so this is a significant uh, uh experience I feel. No? Yeah. Because if you can play that through now in many things, if you're smart enough, you see, well, what really in here is so precious? What actually inside me is so precious? Actually, is just the thought that it is precious is being kept, and then some things feel no, no, no. I don't want to change. I don't want to move on from this mm. because these are very important things to me. I said, really, if you could actually see them for what they are, you would find that they are of no value to you now. They were of value to the stage that you were in your conscious uh, evolution at that time. But you evolve beyond a certain thing, and now when you see it from the now presence that you are, it's like, yeah, okay, it's okay. You see, there was a time when I was so much into art, into art, you no, know? and I would go to a, a, a gallery in London, like the National Gallery or the Tate Gallery, and I look and I look at some paintings. And say, wow, man, these painters were gods, you know. These painters were gods, you know. Look at uh, Leonardo da Vinci or. Michelangelo or Rembrandt or even contemporary painters like Picasso and so on look and say, oh, Wow, I mean that look at the texture of this, look at the 
just look at the feel it has so much feel in it you know and after this movement of that transformation took place inside you no know, then i went and looked at paintings again that i cried over you know when i saw them so oh man it's so beautiful it's so beautiful look how rembrandt has caught this kind of light how he gives so much life in the face and i look at the rembrandt now i say you know the painting is good it's good it's good but i'm not moved like i was then and uh, and any painting or anything even i've been to nature people have brought me to places and they say we got to show you this and that always scares me because i think i'm going to have to i'm going to have to perform now because they're going to show me their 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 set piece and it comes in muji look turn around open your eyes ta da and i go you know like this i'm thinking wow that's really good you know but inside i feel nothing at all no it may sound that you know but but that is so bad that you don't feel anything i said it's not bad because the thing i feel with this is always fresh you see and it's not that doesn't always oh, it's horrible is it no there's still many things that things i look at the sky or something sometimes a moment comes and i may look at a flower or a or a piece of cork or something and i feel this is amazing you know the power makes this thing but it's only a moment and i don't need to preserve that to become part of me as a memory it's not some even something i do it's not something that an i does anymore it is just somehow the way that the consciousness functions now it's not needing to create a story about life so that i have a story anymore so i don't know what my story is now if you value your identity you may feel sorry for me and say oh man you know poor guy that he has no story you know he has nothing to tell you know wow man that must be so poor what a poor life if you got nothing to share and you got nothing to say about you know like when you were 15 don't you remember that the first time you did this i said well am i supposed to remember this i, I don't know i don't you see but it wasn't an attitude that i cultivated or something it's not something that you say okay from now on i don't believe in this or as from now on i'm not going to seek anymore i don't make any decision at all just you discover something and because of knowing this thing now so many things are processed past and uh, all the ideas about you everything is is cleaned up and so This is where this evening sort of started happening a little bit. I ask you, how many times you watch a movie? And I say, well, you know, what's the most I watched a movie? Maybe about four times. You know, four times watch a movie. But that was a while ago. But I'd like to see it now because even one time I was saying, "Well, have you seen a fi- you know, Seven Brothers for Seven Brides or something like this?" And then, you know, because I have a memory of us sitting together Uh, with the kids and all together and going wow laughing and laughing and now i look at it and thought what was i laughing about <laughs> you see it may be felt like some people may be sad you may don't enjoy things i said oh my life is the highest joy at this moment but i don't need a story for this joy you see and um, we sometimes feel you know i i want to share with you this is another thing that happened I want to share with you something that is so important for me. You know, one one girlfriend she used to say like this to me. You know, I'd love to I'd love if you just I want to read something to you from this book. I mean, it's so magical. I want to let me read something. Okay, you know, but listen, listen, just just give it a chance. Oh, okay. I was so pressured. So, okay, just read me a paragraph. Let's let me just read a page. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. And she's reading. I can see. Oh, and so and so happened. I'm thinking. Oh no! I just really want a sandwich. <laughs> I just want a sandwich and a cup of tea. Just leave me alone, man. You know. I don't need to hear what Emily Bronte wrote about right now. I don't feel nothing for it. But I, you have the right to feel something for it. But I don't feel nothing for it. You see. So so many things like this. I feel. This is what is beautiful that even even like this we come and look at something together 
and uh, I don't know, sometimes in a no mind moment, like somehow I find myself watching television, you know, and something enjoys, you know, because sometimes I sit watch TV, some I might be there for three or four hours. But when other people come and they start to watch with me something, then I see we're not looking in the same way at all. Because they look and they have many judgments and commentary and interpretations and stuff, and it becomes very noisy, very noisy. You see, and I see that I'm not looking like that. Like something is just watching in no mind for some. It's like it's like he said, but why would you watch something if you're not interested and you have no mind? I say I can't explain this to you. Maybe I, I we're looking at the movie and I'm looking at that wallpaper in the background or something. Just somehow the way that this color looks and something. I, I don't know what I watch. I don't know what happens. But it's it's all fine. I can say these things to you because you have a a sensitivity now for for a new kind of understanding. But it, I would not go and trouble people about these things if they want to watch and we watch together. Sometimes the movie we watched before it was fun. We had a laugh as well too on this and. I don't know what to say about these things. If there's something to keep or, or to say, oh wow, that man, oh that was really funny. Like I remember this movie we talked about. I don't remember which one you you said the name of it to us. And I just remember this this scene actually, where he came around and he was at the, at the hospital, and then he said he was going. They were taking him back to his room. And he turned around. He had one of these dressing gowns on. He turned around, and you could just see that he has no, <laughs> no clothes, just his bottom. That was funny. <laughs> and for that one moment, I want to say, you got to watch this movie. For something that was about three seconds, you see, your mind can work like that. I don't remember anything much more about the movie except yes, he was he started. The gist was he was in met this young woman and was kind of in love, and then she went to meet her family, and then he fell in love with the mother or something or whatever. And for little things, little tags of memory, we are inviting a lot of people to participate in our story. Then, when you see them, if you're honest, you see, uh, it's not. It's not how you are not the same one who saw it so many years ago. You know. So there's something in that. Something is taking place here in this place, and that each one is coming from wherever you have come from, called by one voice, responding in different ways. Maybe I don't know, but to discover something that most human beings are not going to discover in this lifetime. And I don't know how many people amongst the people here will discover it fully. We may discover partially, and with your partial discovery, you will have a much improved life. Because anyone who has spent just even more than three, four days, your life is going to change in some way. And it's not a big deal. It's going to change anyway. But this change will happen at a deeper level. You see. But some. Are going to go through all the way you have to go through to come back to your original nature without uh, without feeling that you're somebody who is doing something. You see, this may not have great value in this world. So if you want to do something that has great value in this world, you may not be happy with what I'm saying. You see, but this world is just dream. It's just momentary, you know. What is, what is this life? The value of this life is the value of your memories. So far about things, but something greater than memory is here, you know. This freshness, you see. But in our world, the world that is shaped through our mind and conditioning, and with the identity that you are this person, you are this body. Uh, my wish is that. 
everybody grows a bit beyond that limited view. You don't have to kill this view, leave it alone, but move more deeply into the deeper seeing, you see. Come, come, keep coming, come, come, come. You know, you may find that something you can't go back to, but you won't regret that. Or you'll regret it only in those moments when your spirit is feeling a bit weak. You may feel, oh, I, 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 I remember when we used to do this, but that's a weakness. You see, because nobody can go back to past. You cannot go back to past, but you can hold on to an idea about past, but you cannot actually go back to the past. You see, and even this one I'm telling you now is a relative knowledge. It's not the highest. No. So when you come and you talk like this, I am not disappointed. You know, I say, but you know, but it's good that you experienced it. Sometimes, on, unless life actualizes or creates actual scenarios of what is inside, then we we don't really get a chance to see it for what it is. Sometimes life has to, you know, kind of create a some scenario in front of you to get acted out so you can actually see it in a new way in a fresh way so that you can say actually i can leave this now mm-hmm. otherwise we can carry our memories into a very very long way even into another life you may not remember those particular memories but somehow it creates a kind of orientation in you and and so you're not t- totally free you know Totally. Sometimes these things we talk about can have a shade of sadness. You can feel a bit of sadness, no? Because we have so much this desire, this urge to want to make real what is unreal, or to give it that seal of solidity. And you're you're discovering as we grow up, or grow in, that it's not as solid as you. Your mind want to make it to be, but I feel that when we accept this in your heart, it becomes something beautiful. It becomes a light, and so pure. But if you hold on to your person, it somehow will bring in sadness, you know, because you think that oh my God, I'm losing things that are so precious to me. But they're only some. That's just an idea in your mind. Can you imagine if a sage or a God is worried about the past? Oh, why did I do that? Why did I make all these human beings? I made, I made, I made too many of them. Now I, I can't control the damn thing because they keep multiplying. And oh my God, how can you know? This is just nonsense things. Sometimes I see the people they are experiencing some pain, but I don't feel pain for them, because I know that this pain is going to lead to a greater understanding, greater growth. You see. So you don't just look at the, you know, at the photographs of life. You look at the movie. You look at the at the flow of it, and you understand that this is going somewhere. It's it's bringing you into a maturity, but you're only sad for the moment and for the for the. The brief images that you are holding in your mind. I said, "Well, no, no, your your life is opening up, you know. And this pain you're feeling now is necessary. How I would feel sorry for you. But no, no, I feel happy for you. Because some pain you have to feel to grow, and to outgrow other things." Story I told you about these things, art. You know, still now, sometimes I pick up a brush or some things to paint, but it's a different way somehow. It's kind of fresh. It's not so important. No? I can paint and enjoy. The joy is there, but ambition is not there. Many things I did in my life, ambition was there. It was I was saving up for, like you're saving up to make a big impact, and now it's just, just it can be playful. More playful, you know. 
know, taking things so seriously. But that is an outcome of your own spiritual maturing. It's not somebody's attitude. It's not someone's intention. It's just the beauty of the the consciousness, which is freed from the from the from personhood. It's like that. The consciousness does not waste any part of its expression. It's useful for something. Every single thing you see is useful for something. You see, you have used it, you throw it away. But someone else, for them, is going to be fresh until it becomes stale for them. Everything is everything is being made useful. You see. It's like you. You had to learn in school A B C D E F G H I J K. You have to go to alphabet like this. Now you don't need to do that. Now you can speak and put concepts together in a very eloquent and sophisticated way. You cannot say, "Oh, it was rubbish to learn this." You needs it. You don't need to do it. No, because someone who is going to be starting A B C D now is fresh for them. It's a challenge for them to learn it. But you don't have to learn anymore. So you cannot say that because you don't need to do it is no good. Yes, for someone it is there. It is there. It's, it's a. It's one step in their ladder for growing in in the phenomenal world. And the one who is aware in the in the heart, they know these things. So they are kind in all ways. You know, they see that okay, maybe this is a kind of growth in the in the field of the in the domain of the body mind. This thing has to happen. It's still grace is playing here. But that one has transcended this entire field in some way. They see that all of it, every aspect of the the manifest consciousness, is impermanent. It's just, and it's meant to be. It's not a fault. It's just that's the aspect of it, and they are they are fine with it. You see, but still, if you have a body and the consciousness is there and the, the vital force is there, you there's some tension will be inside you. Can you imagine a life where conversations at this level was not possible? Hmm? That all you talk about is bread and butter, and you know, making money, and how many friends you have, and stuff like this. But you could not go further than that. That these things that are taking place for you now, the way that your awareness is recognizing itself more and more. And the inner joy and the space you are discovering. I suppose this was not a possibility. And still, there is space more to discover. You see? So don't stop, because there are still higher and higher regions to go, if you wish. And yet, if you somehow has discovered that you are the awareness itself, and that awareness cannot evolve. But the consciousness can. Awareness does not evolve, but consciousness can. You see. And while the consciousness is there, although it is the temporary aspect of the real, that no one can stop that evolution. It is continuously deepening, maturing more and more, becoming more and more beautiful, more and more beautiful. Mm. And even if you have to be again on this earth in another form, uh, make sure you get a good start. Many people in India, they, they, they have an acceptance in themselves. You know, after this life, I want to be born again, in 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 better circumstances. That are more uh, a noble birth means to be born in the company of sages. No? They say yes, please God, if you, if when next when I come again, let me be born in the company of the wise. Some, they are praying. Oh, you know, let me be. I I want to be in the company. I want to be famous. I want to be comfortable. I want to be born in the West. I want whatever it is. <clears throat> Maybe we are living in answered prayers. <laughs> Easy. Yes. And uh, maybe there was a there was a point. There was one point. Where you had so much fear to go beyond where you were, 
to leave the last life. You know, it's oh, so much fear, but it brought you to here now. You see, and you cannot regret this thing. You say, "Oh my God, you know, I, I, how can I regret this?" Wisdom will be your friend. It will be your light that guide you spontaneously, intuitively, while you have the sense of a path and a journey. Nobody knows how long we have been roaming upon the earth. We don't know. Nobody knows. You don't know how many times you have tasted heavenly realms and returned to earthly realm. You know. But now something beautiful is happening. You have been pointed to the Supreme. Because I have been talking so much about this, going beyond, going beyond tribal awareness, going beyond localised awareness, conditioned consciousness, you know? You know, merging in universal, your universality, coming back to your universality, see? where everything fits into you, everything is fit into you. Don't exclude anything. Everything has come out from here. And look after every every aspect of yourself. Don't separate. You know? And uh, then this life is the most auspicious life. Then why not make this life your most auspicious life? You don't know what has been in the past, but something was not complete because you're here still. You don't have to be fighting old battles again. You know, go for the highest thing. You know? Go for the highest thing. Hmm. And, uh, we have to be cured of this drug, the drug that keeps us in duality. No? Uh, duality is fine, but don't be a prisoner of duality. Hmm? Duality must be there because there cannot be any experience without duality. But don't be a prisoner of duality. A prisoner means to hold on to an idea of yourself that you're only a person. This is a prisoner of duality. But when you discover the truth of who you are, you see, then you're freed from it. Then duality becomes a beautiful. It's divine. You see the divinity of it. You see the momentariness of it. And uh, words can never be right enough. They can never get this accurately enough. They can only be a signpost, a signal, a symbol. But the rest you have to complete inside yourself. You have to complete it. You have to use your consciousness to transform words into spirit. To recognize the spirit of the, that the words are indicating something, and there's not really such uh, so many things there. It's not about things anymore, but a field of harmony, a field of synchronicity inside. Is it? The real knowledge has never been about. It's not data. It's not about objects. It's not about things. It really is in in, in from the uh, on the platform of the divine. It is about a harmony, a synchronicity with the universal consciousness. It's not about information. Information is meaningless in the higher realm. Only pure harmony is important. Pure harmony is the language of the gods, you know. Synchronicity with God. Information about this thing and that, these things that are just It feels like every part of my body is made of joy. 
<laughs> yes. Uji, mm. can I expose something? I just feel strong that something like I feel so much fear. Like I, on one hand, I or on all hand, I am here for this, and I I know this, and this is clear to me. But what comes now is such a big fear. It's like I have like a. It feels almost like an energy field, which I'm I'm going to to I'm with the awareness and try not to be with the energy field. But it feels like something is really in the dark, and I feel like I need to somehow I don't I don't know expose it or it's like it's my whole person energy and it's it's so. Mm. But you know, it has to come because of moments like this, because of grace. It has to come to the surface. No? You see, uh, it's like for a long time it tries to find a place to hide. It hides in the noise, so it's not detected, it? and so it can perpetuate and live uh, like a caterpillar, mo- eating one leaf and moving to the next leaf. It's like that. But now something you're in a, a higher state, higher possibilities are around you, and so your eyes are opening, widening, broadening, deepening in some way. And so what is not resonating with the truth now, it begins to come to the surface, and it doesn't feel pleasant. You, know? you see, but you must bear that for the moment because it is passing. It's something that's going to pass. It's something that's being cured. You see, it's coming up. If you live only in unholy company, then you can carry this virus in you, and nobody will know. Yes. You understand? But because you've come more into a higher field of consciousness, then those lower energies they're not serving you, and they 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 it's like they get highlighted, they become fluorescent, they're coming up, and then you start to feel bad. You say, "Oh, I don't know. How, how, how I feel so bad, and I just feel all. I just feel miserable. And I thought I'm supposed to feel peaceful, and so on. I was I supposed to feel light." I said, no, no, no. Right now it's time to puke. Now it's vomiting time. Sometimes like this. It's not so so it feels bad, but more in the mind, you know. Because even for some beings in these stages they feel very, very they feel highly grateful and highly you know, just sort of uh, just grateful that life has picked you up and is squeezing all this stuff out. It's emptying your toothpaste. So if he's, oh no, it's so horrible, it's so horrible. But at the same time, there's another part inside you that can feel, you know, it's so good. You know? I'm being set free from something. Yeah. It's it's pounding like it's it's very strong. Like I can't see it. I can't stay with awareness. It's like this 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 constant taste of being a failure that is very much connected to a me. And oh yes, 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 and, yes, yes, yes. Know, because this it. is what this is the poison for the consciousness <laughs> is the person when it becomes personal, you see. And yet the consciousness for a while was addicted to the person for personhood. And yet the personhood is such a, a limitation that it must taste for a while. Because only at a certain point when personhood begins to you want to outgrow it. Something wants to outgrow and then you know something it's like the birth pains to a higher state of consciousness, and some pain is there a little bit like that. So this is fighting for its life, like it's yes. throwing everything. This is the up. this is the mystery, you see. It looks like something is fighting for its life. But in reality it has no life. It only has the life of belief. You know? Yeah. Hmm? Like these memories. Something want to preserve. It has a feeling that these were all nice things. This is what makes my life sweet. This is what makes yeah. me But if you can or go back go back to the pace, the pages you have passed. Read again the story you have read already, and you think, you know, you know, at page fifty-five, I was laughing. I was, you go read page fifty-five. Where was the joke here? You know, I can't find. I can't find. I can't find. Let's go to page fifty-seven. There was something there. Ah, ah, this, this. Ah, and then read it and say, but this doesn't feel. It's nothing. 
we don't need to honor the past make use of it no and uh, there's something that is not past or future or even present but because it is there the notion of past and future and present has a momentary meaning has meaning for that inside it but not for this thing and and this is what's happening some something sometimes is weaving in and out like going in and out of the focus and consciousness sometimes you're in this kind of haze again and you and it's like you're walking through some mist you're looking and you know and you can't find your way or something and then another moment you know the light is shone on you again and you realize oh what is all that it's just it's nothing <laughs> but before you're crying buckets of tears oh my life is falling apart what am i going to do oh no what is that? and then the light is put on this thing you think what was that about it's nothing at all these are the most important fights you'll have for a bit they don't have to go on all your life but still we must have an attitude that if it takes all your life to keep on refining and so on then so let it be there this yeah your attitude is important it's like supposing now every day mm, you get up and you your your mind says life is so hard you know because every morning you get up you have to you know you have to uh, brush your teeth you know <laughs> three times or two times a day so that's 14 times a week so that's how many times a month how many times a year and then by the you know but you don't think of life like that you get up in the morning you brush your teeth you don't you don't oh take it off i brush my teeth you see you don't have to monitor everything that is being done in this body like it's something you have to do they're just happening but the mind makes it like it's something you have to do it's so so cunning so cunning but in your wisdom you're so much higher than that but you must use your wisdom you must have to find your wisdom you see you, see? you can't stay as a person and beat this mind i know you understand yes yeah you have to go to presence only presence can beat this mind person cannot beat it the person is also it and don't be lazy for that because the mind will put you can produce many many toys for you to play with but each of them help you to go to sleep each of them is a sleeping tablet make you go to sleep use everything be everything if you have the sense that you know but all of this is consciousness it is like a vaccination against this sleep but if you believe yourself believe in yourself as a person then you'll go to sleep and going to sleep doesn't mean that you're in bed you're walking around you can be walking around in an armani suit but you're still sleeping sleeping means you're unaware of your true self waking up means that you're aware of your true position and you see somehow that and you see and experience and taste every second you see the the menu of the waking state and you know you're in the restaurant of life you know it somebody know this thing is okay then you see the life is not a curse it's not a curse it's just something some some the most amazing the most wonderful the most wonderful mind the most wondrous mind has created this uh, as a game for itself to play to see if it can be deluded by its own projections and to come out of it out of sleep he brought you here the wisdom inside it is so much on a higher level that you can't explain it but when you are somehow aware of it you know intuitively you find the words cannot explain and they cannot express cannot convey yeah the majesty of consciousness it is so it is so amazing it is so amazing it cannot be taught wisdom cannot be taught it can only flower inside you cannot teach it you, you just somehow have to come back into a synchronicity and releases the perfume of wisdom inside you how are you going to do this it's already on the way 
us even talking like this is because you are moving into the realm of that synchronicity, you see. Otherwise we could not you would not be here, I would not be here. Everything, everything in your life contributed to you being here right now. You see. And you could not have worked it out. Nobody could work it out. So leave it and trust. You see. And then you come to recognize that there is a power here, not an accident. Life is not an accident. There is a power that if you dis- if you discover it, you find that your life uh, is raised in its in its quality. You know, consciousness is is growing higher and higher, more subtle, more more profound, more deep, more introspective. You know, yeah. this is what this life is for for you. I know. <laughs> Whenever I speak like this, I've said on some occasion. No? Inside, uh, I use the word sometimes. I say all the angels are singing inside. You see, all the beings they are they are full of joy because they their joy is this vibration. You see, when the mind becomes light again, it's not burdened with so many concepts, yeah? and it is it is again re- being reminded. Of the holiness of being, you become empty. It's dropping all this luggage of of memory and time and projections and so on. And it's like oh, I say, all the angels, all the heavenly beings, they are singing, rejoicing, Alleluia to truth inside. And you can feel the energy of the presence of them inside. No? It is all one. One voice is doing. Many people come. They want to. They want to get something. They want you to give them something. But the real knowledge take away something. It removes the ignorance. No, take out the ignorance. When the ignorance is taken out, you know, it's not knowledge that's left. Not knowledge like informational knowledge. It's like an emptiness is there. When the emptiness is there, because God doesn't need to learn anything. You understand? The God self does not need to learn anything. It's never ignorant. It just is, and the, the the mind cannot understand isness, you see, because it yearns for becomingness. It does not comprehend what isness is, you see. So it's always looking for something, something that is going to happen. It hasn't discovered the thing that never happens, but happening happens in the unhappening reality. So these things, I don't know how. We can speak about them. I speak about them because there's a joy arising in my heart just to talk about them, to share them. No? But that joy only comes to share that in a receptive space. You know, because something inside is open and wants to feed from this. It wants to be reminded again of its origin. This is not an origin way back in time. Time is not uh, its origin. It's not its method. This life is a kind of two aspected thing. On one side, you have all of this dynamic life, and things are happening every day, and we are doing this, and we are fixing things, and we are digging and planting trees, and we are trying to get to the to the speak to the council and so on. On one level, it's like that. And on the on the flip side of this, it's absolute silence, absolute stillness, nothing going on, nothing happening there. It's the source of the dynamic. And it is the stronger field. It is the pure field. It is the source field. It is the unchanging. You see, it is the ever-present. Hmm? The dynamic side is the fluctuating. It is like uh, the flickering lights of night and day. They are moving, but the other thing is beyond night and day. But the thing that is moving uh, cannot do it without the source from where it comes. 
It's like we are both. In our expression, we are expressing as time and change. But that time and change is taking its birth from the unchanging. So it's like both are there, and yet this this both is also concept. It's not both one; it's only one. When it manifests, it plays like duality through time and change and so on. But it is always constant, even simultaneously with the changeful. It it is the unchanging. It's not like say you're going into another room. For me, it is not another room. Not the room of the unchanging and the room of the changing. It's like it's all one, but it's not easy to explain this thing. I can only wish and pray that you are sufficiently inspired and touched by the presence of the Holy Spirit in that way. So that it becomes such a deep and powerful yearning inside you, that the mind, the, the superficial mind, the personal mind, stands no chance. No, mm. hmm? your burning is future. No, it's being devoured into timelessness. Mm. That all the aspirations that are in time, that you will wake up from this thing. Yet let it play. Somehow it's playing. It's there, and yet it's not there. I feel like now I'm also pushing that play away, yeah. like the, the that what is wants to hold on to time and all these projections and 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 you know create in whatever way it plays. I'm like no, no. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm. It's, yeah. And somehow that is an important stage. Hmm? Still early stage in it. Import, it was still important stage to be somehow pushing for a while, but don't identify as a pusher. No. Mm? Somehow is thinking something is being pushed. Something is being somehow what you may say uh, ignored even. Yeah. Mm? Just not getting involved in it. Mm-hmm. You see, this is the exercising of your uh, consciousness and your conscious wisdom. You see, you sort of know where it's going. So mm-hmm. Just leave it. You're exercising some control. It's different from suppression. It is a power in it, you see, and it's healthy. You say, "No, I don't want to walk this." And when you refrain from that, you feel the greater space is inside you. That is, you try like this for a minute. And gradually, more and more, what will happen is that the consciousness is becoming more spontaneous. You see, after a while, the feeling of needing to push something away is much easier for you. Don't even push it away. All you need is to remember yourself, to hold your focus, and everything drops. You see. Then there is an increasing. Your increasing of vibration is happening inside you, and this vibration is like, it is like the bodyguard of the beingness. It's like your inner Zen stick. Somehow, whenever any field of delusion or this force of delusions, illusions are coming, something just somehow, just somehow. Discard it more, more easy, without any strain and without oh, why is this happening to me? And then no, no, this will it will all go. You see. So your attitude should be, thank you that this life, this is happening now. And uh, let, me, let me move fully, fully in, fully home, and to complete this, let me be no longer deluded by the projections of my mind. Don't keep any feeling of separation from you with in my heart anymore. Then amazingly, the things uh, many things in life, huh, you will still enjoy. You're not gonna stop Enjoying Michael Jackson because somehow you're awake. You you enjoy. Oh, yeah, this music is it's beautiful. But you're not any longer, you know, building a story around some a moment which is only momentary. You're not creating some thing anymore. Everything can be in a moment. Everything is fresh. See, 
The senses are not the problem. The senses are not your offender. They are not your enemies. Even the mind, even thought now, is not to become your enemy anymore. Hmm? When you understand your nature anymore, not even thought can be your enemy anymore. You say, ah, oh, you are my friends, huh? You are my friends, you know? because without you, you see, I would not suffer. And if I didn't suffer, I would not aspire for the truth. So in a way, you help me, but you are the unthanked friends. You see, because your lessons sting me, huh? Because this me there was still something that was, a, a, it was a false identity, and something had to bite that, so that a deeper understanding, a deeper truth, could let it go. And letting it go, you find yourself again. Yes, yes. It's very good. All of it. All of it is good. All the beings who are born, they must go through this gate of transformation again. There was a time, you know, I used to smoke tobacco, you know, I used to smoke cigarettes. And uh, it was very difficult to. Um, I gave up now and again, I gave up, you know, and go back. This went on for some years, you know, smoking roll ups and cigarettes, you know. And. Um, one time I was in the south of Italy. We were having a retreat, sauna retreat, and um, smoking is like it, it, one of the great things about it in this body is that it was clear that it was responsible for some things, because every time I smoke after a bit, it would pain would go straight to my kidneys. I would feel it, and uh, it was it was one of those stages for me. And, I remember going to bed in the afternoon because I was so tired, and there was all these mosquitoes, and I climbed under the mosquito net, lying there, very uncomfortable for some reason, with this breathing and hot. And then a voice came inside, very, very clearly, and says, "Stop." And uh, I know this voice, and uh, normally, it, when something arises like this for me. I would take all those things like cigarettes, I'd break them up into, into powder and throw them in the bin. I was so tired I I couldn't move, you know. But that's when I stopped smoking, you see. And after this time I went back again briefly for about three or four days in Tuluvanamalai some years ago. And then somehow I think no no, I don't want to stop. But very often when I see people smoking, you know, it reminded reminded me and something inside feels tremendous gratitude. Thank you that this is finished inside here. The same thank you come that something turned your life around and away from a path to to a kind of death. <coughs> And uh, turned your face towards life, and something inside sings this gratitude. Whether you do it with words or something, doesn't matter. <coughs> but it feels gratitude, and it raises the consciousness very, very high. Mm. That you don't dwell, because one of the ways, of the trademark of the mind, is that you spend so much time talking about your mind. When you spend so much time talking about your mind. In an unconscious way, you are giving power to your mind. It is like singing praises to your enemy, in a way. So this is changing now. It is changing, is it?
but do remember that the mind is not just bad. The mind plays bad to help you to be free. <laughs> this aspect of yourself has to do this, because in this field, the field of interrelated opposites, of duality, both sides must be there. We need both sides to evolve and to aspire and to evolve again uh, beyond the field of concepts. <laughs>